Hi guys, is everybody okay? Can you all hear me? If you can, please, uh, if you can't, please just message us in the chat and we'll see if we can get that organized for yourself there, guys. Anyways, um, it's a delight to be able to present this webinar for you. Uh, so good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are. Thank you all for joining us today for an exclusive webinar launch of DGI's new enterprise solution. We are thrilled that you could join us and we are honored to present to you the eagerly anticipated Matrice 300 and H20 sensor series. We would have, of course, have liked to provide you with an exclusive demonstration and live launch event to you in person, but given the unprecedented circumstances, a digital launch is the next best thing and rightly so. With us today, we've got myself, Michael, who is head of sales here at HeliGuy. We've got Rory Hardman, who is our business development manager, who's worked in the UAV industry for 10 plus years. And we also have Ben Shirley, who is head of our training, and which most of you will be very familiar with. During the webinar, we will be providing you with a flight demonstration of the Matrice 300, specification overview of both the drone and the H20 series, applications the solution can be adopted to, and an opportunity for you guys to ask questions you have, which we will do our best to answer them for you. Before we move on to uh, the, the good stuff, if you like the videos and uh, the sort of specifications, if that's what you like, um, we'd like to just talk to you a little bit about HeliGuy, give you an overview, um, our team partners that we work with, and a brief timeline of DJI Enterprise products up to the present day with the Matrice 300 and H20 series. So here we have our team. Um, so these are the guys that uh, make the adoption of drones for enterprise possible. They range from sales to technical, training and logistics, working in sync and dedicated to provide you with the support crucial to any drone program. A brief history of HeliGuy. So we uh, established in 2006, and soon after we partnered with DJI when they were just a small team in Shenzhen, and we worked with them from the beginning of the program to be in the position we are now, which is a gold level partner and a top five global UAS solution provider. Currently, we are the only multi-continental DJI partner providing supply, support, and training to a vast range of industries, such as critical infrastructure, construction, oil and gas, mining and public safety, to name a few. We've developed a vast global network of partners servicing approximately 10,000 uh, drones with roughly two thirds of them being active within industry verticals. Over the years, we've introduced a number of added value services for our customers from access to our half a million pound rental fleet for dynamic supply and introducing a world's first fully managed drone fleet rental service known as Full Stack. As is necessary with any enterprise drone program, the technical support is key, which we have a team of dedicated technicians and research and development personnel to support you when you need us to. To provide customers with a diverse and industry leading solutions, we have formulated an expanse partnership network which range from specialist sensor providers software and service providers, research partners, and training providers. The core is to offer safe, secure, compliant, and more importantly, scalable solutions, putting DJI hardware at the center of our client's drone program. As you can see from this slide, um, our client operates uh, on all continents of the globe, serviced and supported from our headquarters here in both the UK and the US. And these range from clients such as global mining corporations, national rail services, oil and gas, energy service providers, and emergency services, to name a few. So security is a key component to your drone program, and DJI over the years have developed features and functions to aid with this. Geofencing, altitude limitations, advanced warning information, air sense ADSB, and obstacle avoidance sensors are just some of the features present across the DJI range. 
All data is secured through a US-based Amazon web server, and the option to locally manage and store data using FlightHub has been developed, which some of you may be familiar with. Here's just a quick a breakdown of the evolution of uh, DJI Enterprise products, starting with the, the Matrice 100 uh, a number of years ago. Uh, there have been quite a few advances since that was introduced. Um, to complement that platform, there was sensors developed, including the XD thermal range and the ZEMU's Z30 zoom cameras to complement the requirement of industry verticals. Through the SDG, I've developed industry-specific platforms such as the Matrice series, which is known as the Workhorse. We've got the Phantom 4 RTK for GIS applications and the Mavic Enterprise series, which is developed with public safety in mind. This leads us up to the point where we are with the Matrice 300 and the H20 series being unveiled as the next generation of platforms. Just going to play with you guys a short video now of a flight demonstration that we uh, we did a, a week ago or so um, in the flight field uh, with our training team. Um, so please enjoy. Recently, the Heligai training team received a demo unit of the new DJI Matrice 300. We took this enterprise platform out to our test facility in the northeast to see how it performed. Having accrued hundreds of flying hours on the DJI Matrice 200 series, the team were quick to point out the similarities between the two. Whilst the aircraft was immediately familiar, there are still plenty of distinct differences where the 300 treads new ground. The first and most obvious is the aesthetics, in that on first impressions it takes the form of something which resembles an upside down variation of its older brother. In the box, the aircraft sits upside down, evidently a concept which facilitates rapid and methodical assembly. Brandishing its underbelly, the aircraft payload and landing gear can be attached with the aircraft remaining seated in its box. The arms deploy from their cross-folded stowage position to fully deployed in seconds, and the permanently affixed 21-inch folding props lessen the time for preparing the aircraft for flight. The new TB6012S lithium polymer batteries boast an unprecedented 5,935 mAh, providing up to 55 minutes flight time without a payload. This is obviously subject to the weight of the selected payload, but with three new compatible payloads being released in addition to the Z30 and XT2, as well as a triple gimbal option, the potential of this platform are limitless. Whilst the inverted motors may on first impressions appear somewhat alien, they are crucial to the ingress protection 4-4 rating afforded by the platform. In the skies, the aircraft is as you'd expect from any DJI platform, precise, stable and reliable, and the new Smart Controller Enterprise features dual batteries, DJI Pilot app and OcuSync Enterprise. The fixed 145 degree field of view FPV camera provides the remote pilot with a crystal clear 960p situation awareness with augmented horizon indicator and telemetry data. The Matrice 300 has a 15 meter a second or 33 mile an hour maximum wind limitation and a maximum speed of 51 miles an hour. The auxiliary conspicuity lighting, upwards and downwards facing beacons are also a welcome addition for night operations. Overall, the team were very impressed with the platform and there's no doubt that this will be a formidable addition to any enterprise or emergency services fleet. And there we have it. So that was the first flight demonstration of the Matrice 300. Um, you may have noticed during the video that the Matrice 300 was described as IP44 rated. However, I am delighted to announce that this has been issued an IP45 rating. In terms of the payloads, we were unable to get our hands on them initially, but uh, rest assured that we will be getting them in the next uh, week or so, and we will be doing comprehensive videos relating to them, which will be released and available for, for anybody to, to view and, and get more in depth with them. To follow on from the flight demonstration, I'm delighted to hand over to Ben, who's gonna run through the specifications of the M300 and the H20 series. So over to you, Ben. <clears throat> thanks very much, Michael. So uh, thanks for joining the, uh, the meet, everyone. And my job is to take you through some of the specs and the technical sort of information about the aircraft and also some of the use cases which make this such a fantastic aircraft. So we're going to start off by looking 
at the superior performance to kick us off. So some of the specs that you might be interested in. The first one is that the aircraft has, as I mentioned in the video, a 55 minute maximum flight time, which by comparison to some of its previous siblings is an increase of 250%. As most of you have been asking for, you want longer flight times and a better resistance to wind. And that's exactly what DJI have delivered here. With the effective flight times in a practical sense, Fitted with the X-T2 and the Z-30, the Matrice 210 actually achieved about a 15 minute flight time. Obviously this is subject to uh, variations based on environment factors. The Matrice 300 though, with the H-20 payload will fly operationally for 43 minutes, which is an absolutely fantastic period making uh, the aircraft achieve sometimes what you had to achieve with several sets of batteries. So that's the, the, the general flight times that you can achieve from this platform. And all this is provided by these brand new 12 STB60 intelligent lithium polymer batteries. Some of the features that you've seen on the previous Matrice 200 are obviously upgraded into the 300 in the fact that they do uh, handle things like self-heating and that they do the, the standard charge and discharge uh, intelligent mechanisms which are built in intrinsically to the majority of DJI batteries. In fact, all the ones certainly in the last five years. But I also wanted to take this opportunity to introduce you to the BS60 battery charging station. Again, we saw this with the Matrice 200, but this one is a little bit different in that it comes with this ruggedized case, as we've seen previously, but it can hold T, uh, eight TB60 batteries and four WB37s for the smart controller enterprise. It can charge two of those batteries in a period of 60 minutes. That's two TB, uh, TB60 batteries in a period of 60 minutes. Now with the flight time, as I've mentioned in the previous slide, this means that it is more or less a one in one out ability. It can also be used for storage as well. So whilst it holds those eight TB60s uh, and the, the four WB37 batteries, it means they can be left in the case as well and used as a storage device. So moving on to some of the performance between the smart controller enterprise, as you saw in that previous video, this uses OcuSync Enterprise, which <clears throat> provides a 15 kilometer max transmission, FCC, and eight kilometers here in Europe. And that is a 1080p HD uh, feed right back to your remote pilot station. It also uses a triple, triple video channel support mechanism, which means that you maintain a good, strong, stable connection throughout your flight. In terms of the performance then, the maximum takeoff mass, some of the technical information you might want to consider, has a maximum takeoff mass, uh, sorry, maximum takeoff weight of nine kilograms. And it has a payload capacity of up to 2.7 kilos. And there is, as you see in the image to the right hand side, this triple gimbal option, which means that the aircraft can be customized according to the, the user's use case. As you see on the example, just on the, uh, on the screen to the right, you can put that the XTS, um, something which we're not gonna talk about in this presentation, but we'll follow on a little bit later, together with, I believe that's the Z, uh, Z15 Spotlight. And then we'll introduce you to the next series, the H20 series, I don't wanna to get too far ahead of myself. But having that ability to fit three sensors simultaneously, and I say three sensors, I mean three payloads, some of them have multiple sensors, then the options for this aircraft are absolutely limitless. So whilst we're talking about the H20 series, let's have a look into the two new payloads, which we're, we're gonna be focusing on a little bit more in this presentation. The first of which is the H20, and then we have the H20T, the hybrid 20 and the hybrid 20 thermal. So starting off with the, uh, the technical specs for these aircraft, uh, sorry, these uh, payloads, the, the each, each sensor is a CMOS sensor. The first sensor that you'll see on both the H20 and the H20T is a one to one seven inch uh, uh, 20 megapixel sensor. The second is a one to two third inch 12 megapixel sensor. Now that zoom sensor that you see, the 20 megapixel comes with a 23 times optical zoom. It also fit, it's also fitted with a near infrared laser range finder with a maximum distance of 1200 meters and a wave, wavelength of 905 nanometers. So the, the, the sensors which are fitted into this one payload 
uh, really provide many options for the users, but also some of the intelligent flight modes and functions that we're going to talk about a little later on this presentation are key to the variety that these, these payloads add. So uh, the difference between the H20 and the H20T is that radiometric sensor. That's a 640 by 512 sensor and has a frame rate of 30 frames a second. There are also uh, the ability to conduct digital zoom within that thermal sensor too. So each of the sensors, the H20 and the H20T, are also uh, rated uh, in terms of ingress protection. Now, these are a little bit below the aircraft in that they're an IP44, and we'll talk a little bit later on about exactly what that translates to in terms of the international standards. So the integrated user interface, we're going to be looking at a few videos. I'll play the video in just a second. But the H20 series comes with an all-in-one UI that enables fast switching between a wide angle zoom and thermal sensors. This is something which has been fed back into DJI over many years of organizations using the, the XT, the XT2, and the Z30 together. And they needed that situation awareness, the ability to switch those payloads in a heartbeat so that they could get the optimum shot. Now, this is a completely intuitive user interface with all the functionality that you're used to seeing within the UI. However, it's just been rearranged into a much more aesthetically pleasing and clear head-up display. This also enables uh, the quick access to certain features which are used routinely during the majority of operations. So I'll just play this video for you so you can have a look at the first uh, function. So we're going to be talking about this function specifically, but you can see that the user can switch in and out of the different sensor configurations in an instant. And although this looks very similar to Active Track, this is something we're going to cover a little bit later on in the presentation. So let's move on to the safety and reliability. Of course, it's an important factor with this aircraft and any aircraft that the, uh, the, the safety and the reliability are really second to none. And that's what we'll get with this. Now, optical avoidance sensors, the directional sensing and positioning is provided by both visual and time of flight sensors. And they can detect up to a 40 meter maximum range. They can also be customized. So the aircraft behavior can be customized according to the proximity to the obstacle. There are also top and down facing anti-collision beacons and they are very similar to what you've seen maybe previously on the, the version 2 of the Matrice 210. It also has top and bottom auxiliary lights which can be switched on and off in the DJI Pilot app on the Smart Controller Enterprise. So for night operations this is perfect, that means you can illuminate the aircraft using those beacons and the upwards and downwards facing auxiliary lights. For those organizations who need to use the aircraft in a discrete manner, it does have a, a discrete mode which cuts all of the lights off from the aircraft, obviously subject to certain regulations and permissions, this would be used. So let's talk about the ingress protection then. As, meant, as Michael mentioned, with the, with, with the video that we shot at the time, the demo unit we had, we were, we were looking at the, the specs and that was an IP44. But in that time, DJI have confirmed that this is an IP45 aircraft. So what does that actually translate to? Well, the four from IP45 translates to a protection against solid objects greater than one mil. And the five is uh, liquids and that is protection against low pressure jets of water from any angle. As you, as you also would have seen, the motors now are inverted uh, in that uh, the, the, the propellers actually remain affixed to the aircraft, unlike the, the DJI uh, Matrice 210, where we saw a fixed prop, removable prop, this is actually permanently affixed. So this does form part of the user's maintenance, but in the box, then it means that for rapid deployment, the props simply have to be unfolded checked for airworthiness, and then that's the, uh, the, the prop and motor checked. The ESCs are also now located within the body of the aircraft, and there's an external airflow uh, system, that fan unit, which I'm sure we're all used to if you've worked um, uh, with the Matrice 210 V2. This still uh, features on this aircraft. So moving on to the health management system, this is uh, a new addition to the DJI Pilot app in that previously you'd have to navigate through the menus in order to establish 
pre-flight checks and the health of the aircraft, as well as firmware updates and error logs as well. Now, this is all being placed into one very unique health management section of the app, which makes it a lot easier for the remote pilot to navigate through the menus. It's more intuitive, informative, and it en enables greater governance of the maintenance of an aircraft too. Moving on then to the systems of redundancy, and as you, I'm sure you would have uh, guessed it, yes, of course it's an IMU, a dual IMU unit. Likewise for the barometer and compass, dual compass, dual barometer, and also there is a dual RTK antenna and GNSS module as well. Now, you are probably looking at this and saying, okay, we're maybe expecting a hexcopter or an octcopter. This is still a quadcopter. Well, there is a design feature which is built into the aircraft now, which is an advanced algorithm that if the aircraft was to lose a motor in flight, then the aircraft can actually safely land itself. That means that it should the worst happen and you lose a prop, then that doesn't necessarily mean the complete loss of the aircraft. It will put in that algorithm and safely land itself. There's also an advanced dual control mode, which some of you may find very similar to the likes of coach mode or the cam op mode, which you may have used many DJI aircraft with before. I'm going to I'm going to leave it to a little bit later on the presentation to speak about the new uh, handover mode, which comes uh, uh, with this aircraft. You'll also notice that there is a, of course, it's dual battery. So there's two of those 12 S LiPo batteries. If one fails, then the other contains sufficient power in order to take over and safely land the aircraft. So as mentioned already, the three prop emergency landing, make sure that you can land the aircraft. You also have uh, a fixed FPV camera. That's 960p FPV camera. As you saw in the video, that camera also features a, uh, an overlay, an uh, augmented reality overlay, which means you can have a look at certain features um, which we're going to be talking about a little bit later on when it comes to the actual dynamics of the functionality. But there is also ADSB, of course. So uh, the DJI AirSense, which is automatic dependent surveillance broadcast receiver, meaning that on your user interface, you will also receive alerts for manned aviation in the vicinity of the aircraft up to 20 kilometer radius. So let's have a look at some of the advanced intelligence then. So the functions that we're going to be looking at over the next few slides are first and foremost pinpoint, then we're going to move on to smart track and finally location sharing as well. Now some of these I'm sure you can tell just from the name exactly what they'll do, but let's have a look at them in a bit more detail. Starting off with smart pin and smart track. So smart pin and track. It enables you to specifically identify a target which can then display on an augmented reality uh, uh, overlay onto the screen. This also puts a placeholder onto the compass point, so you have a permanent indicator if you're using the H20 series. Specifically for the likes of the emergency services, an example of a good use case for this would be that if you were looking for multiple missing persons and you happen to stumble upon one of them, it means you can mark them on your map as a target before moving on to the next to search for the next target. So this makes sure that person search is a lot more methodical and a lot more simplistic. I'm going to play this video so you can have a look at the practical application of smart pin. So we can see a pinpoint has been placed there. It's also using the laser range finder. So we get the distance and then we get the augmented reality overlay. That's also appears in the bottom corner. You can see the, uh, the compass that tells you the distance to that target. So you can also see it on the map overlay as well. So both of which are displayed on screen in the map box and also the augmented reality. Okay, so let's have a look at the smart track then. Now, I'm sure most of you, one of the favored features of DJI aircraft are things like active track. Well, smart track works a little bit differently. I'm, I'm 
you'll see it in the video and it will absolutely blow your socks off. I, I looked at this and uh, a big grin appeared on my face. The gimbal can automatically detect and follow a defined object like we've seen previously in Active Track, but this is a lot more refined. It can also handle the zoom function of keeping that subject in frame throughout the tracking process. So if the subject is lost, then obviously it, um, it, it needs to try and reacquire that. But the position is also displayed on your map in real time, which means that if you need to intervene manually, you can do so and there's some assistant aids to help you. So let's have a look at the, uh, the function. So we're going to track this, uh, this white vehicle just here. And the zoom is handled completely autonomously by the payload. Now, although we can't tell the speed of what uh, this, sorry, can't tell the speed of that vehicle, you can see how well the sensor is handling the tracking of that target. So that is the new smart track function. Moving on then to location sharing. Now, whilst you're using a pinpoint and smart track, then you can share the subject's position with another operator. Now that can be a uh, the dual remote pilot station configuration, or it can be shared via DJI Flight Hub. Another application for this would be if you need to hand over the position of a uh, an object to the second operator, then it means that you can share that position in the app and they can then obtain that information and get the same interface that you would too. So let's move on to smart inspection. We're going to be looking at Waypoint 2.0, which I'm sure most of you will be familiar with. Uh, we're going to look at live mission recording and then finally the, uh, the um, uh, AI spot check next. So smart inspection Waypoint 2.0 enables up to 65,535 waypoints to be designated either pre-flight or in-flight. And it support, now supports banked turns of the aircraft for a more dynamic flight route. Of course, as you'd expect, point of interest is still supported within Waypoint 2.0, and it supports the, um, the payloads which I've mentioned already, the H20, the H20T, Z30, XT2, and XTS as well. So we have multiple actions and ability for that. It also supports, supports third-party payloads as well via the payload software developer kit. It also supports the... Um, uh, the uh, MSDK, the Mobile Software Developers Kit, and the Onboard Software Developer Kit as well. So live mission recording enables you to automatically add new points to your Waypoint mission when taking photos or recording videos. And it um, automatically adds actions when you're adjusting the gimbal pitch and the pan for a photo. It means that you only have to fly the mission manually once if we're talking about operations in more complex environments with various obstacles to navigate, it means that you will have a more precise autonomous flight the next time you fly, having only actioned that manually on the one occasion. This means that it would also, it's optimized to maximize flexibility and efficiency of your operations. So onto AI spot check then. And this uh, enables the, uh, the gimbal to search for an object for consistency. That means that when you're conducting your manual mission planning, you then go through to a live recording, then the uh, gimbal will automatically search for an object which you previously shot, and it will enable um, the, the sensor to obtain the information completely autonomously. So let's have a look at the video and you'll be able to get an idea of how this works. So moving on to high-res grid photo then. This is a, um, a really useful feature which has been added, which essentially um, is useful in the sense that your aircraft can remain static whilst the 
uh, the, the payloads do the, the legwork, if you will. It means that you can select an area of interest and then the camera will automatically subdivide that object into grids. It will then use the zoom function of the sensor in order to capture a series of images of the entire grid. And then you can essentially stitch that in post-production to obtain a high resolution image of your target. This is uh, ideal for complex and hazardous obstacles which require periodic inspection, such as power lines, as you see there in the image on the right hand side. So let's have a look at the high res grid photo. So that's a very, very quick look through the high res grid photo. But as you can see there for the user, it's simply a case of designating the target grid and then the, the, the payload will do the rest for you. So moving on to the primary flight display, the head up display that you see on the 5.5 uh, inch screen of the smart controller enterprise. So this provides augmented data to provide the remote pilot with an increased situation awareness and aircraft monitoring. The information has always been displayed on the app, but traditionally in the bottom center of the diagram there. But as you see with the augmented um, horizon indicator, as well as the compass, then we have surrounding that the flight telemetry data of the aircraft in a much more visual representation rather than just standard figures. Now I'm gonna play you this video so you can see exactly how they translate to a flight in the sense of the uh, remote pilot information. Now notice as he passed through the obstacles there on the, um, on the compass, just in the bottom center, the obstacle avoidance sensors were indicating exactly where it was detecting there to be an obstruction. And so that information is now also translated directly onto the screen for the remote pilot. So introducing the new advanced dual control function. Most people will know this as either remote pilot and payload operator, which has been uh, used on many aircraft previously, and likewise the coach mode. Well, both of these obviously come with the aircraft too, but you now have the option to do a handover of flight control whilst the aircraft is in the air. So that means both remote pilot and secondary remote pilot can then pass over control between themselves for the aircraft. This is gonna be ideal for those in organizations who are looking to use the aircraft for extended visual line of sight or beyond visual line of sight operations, which means that the two can now be separated and hand over control remaining uh, in flight throughout. So I'm now gonna pass over to um, Rory, who's gonna take you through some of the more complex specs of the SDK. Well, thanks, Ben. I think we can all agree there's been a lot of exciting information to take on here, um, and indeed, so many headlines when we look at the advancements the new, and the new standards that the M300 sets here in terms of performance, safety, reliability, and the advanced intelligence. So let's have a look at the last section here. We've got extensibility and openness. So what this uh, alludes to is it providing for future growth through DJI's open architecture approach. For the developers and the integrators out there, the M300 is SDK enabled. SDK stands for Software Development Kit, which is great news for ongoing and future development. We have mobile SDK, supporting highly customizable mobile app development that can unlock the capabilities of your drone platform to meet specialized mission needs. We also have onboard SDK, customized development of a wide range of features such as six directional, directional sensing and positioning, the health management system, Waypoint 2, and of course, the H20 series payload functionality and more. Payload SDK allows the integration of third party sensors. This is great, great news for end users as we can look forward to exciting new specialized additions to a variety of capabilities and payload options in the future.
So I think this is great to see um, that along with the XT2, the XTS, Z30, and the M300 is also fully back compatible with a family of existing payload SDK payloads created for the M200 series. Some here I think will be familiar to you guys out there, uh, such as the Z15 Spotlight. We have also the multi-spectral sensors. You'll be familiar with slant range and various gas sensors and, and others there. And just some figures here for you. Um, the technology is always evolving. And this shows the resources that are being invested into the DJI Enterprise suite of aerial tools by many of you guys out there. And to give you an idea of how extensive the open SDK architecture is being utilized, I think these figures presented are impressive and, and, and a testament really to uh, how many out there are constantly developing the industry by leveraging DJI's openness approach. I think I can also say that the M300 will no doubt be a catalyst for a new wave of integrations to unlock the true potential these machines offer all of us. And lastly, I think just to note, for those who don't know, a heli guy drone lab called Hectic has conducted hundreds uh, of customized drone solutions for industry clients. Um, and we also have access to payload SDK. So yeah, please get in touch if you want to discuss this, this side of it further. Well, that completes the product overview. And I'm sure you guys probably, well, you probably need a cup of tea and a bit of a lie down, but essentially we have an all new cyber workhorse here, like no other drone on the market. It truly is a, a complete system. You know, they've not just released a platform here, we've got a platform, the BS60 battery station. We've got new smart controller enterprise editions. And of course the new batteries themselves and not to mention the H20 series, which is just incredible. So giving us safer and more efficient access to aerial data sets like we've never seen before. So the question I have is who, uh, what industries is the M300 suited for? What specific applications is it built for? I think what I can say is when something like this comes along, we and all stakeholders involved with the drone operations across all verticals of industry and public safety, we have to evaluate if and how it figures in respect to our drone fleet capabilities. Heli Guy is confident that drone programs across the board will undoubtedly find that this M300 can totally enhance and even create new standards throughout your drone programs to better drive your organizational outcomes. So from improved safety standards for risk managers, improved efficiencies to further save on financial costs to the pilots on the ground who can now work more effectively and safely thanks to the long list of advances this drone provides. What I can say also is we've got the drone right here in front of us. And when you see and feel this flagship drone, you'll know that it's seriously next level technology. It's clearly and purposefully built for industry and public safety alike. It's as if DGI have listened to all of us, the needs of public safety, industry, service providers, and delivered in this new standard of industrial drone. So I think whether you're in public safety, be it fire and rescue, the police forces, border protection, counterterrorism, search and rescue, or industries such as energy, oil and gas, transport, road rail, construction, utilities, telecoms, water, waste, the US service providers, and also research institutions. Remember, it's SDK enabled. We now have a 2.7 kilogram payload. Possibilities for research are incredible. But also not forgetting land management. You know, agriculture could also benefit from the extended flight times, do control the benefits, with BV loss, workflows, etc. So in essence, the M300, I would say, demands to be considered by all drone programs across the board, because I have little doubt that this platform will blow your socks off, for want of a better term.
Okay, so let's move on to a couple of examples, hey? So we have been really, really gratefully provided by DJI with a couple of examples. Obviously, we've only had it for a few days, so we're looking forward to creating our own with you guys who are listening. But um, let's crack on. Um, we've picked out two, <coughs> public safety and energy. So here we have the first public safety case study. Um, and on December the 5th, 2019, a fire outbreak occurred in the mountainous region of Foshan City. And I think for those who don't know, uh, Foshan is a, a city of 10 million people in central Gangdong province, South China. A total of 42 teams were deployed on site, which included local firemen, teams, and additional support from DJI Enterprise. So what we can see is typically you throw up a Mavic Jewel for rapid scene assessment, followed by the deployment of an M300 paired with a H20T. Now in this instance, data was streamed live to the command and control and the teams on the ground utilizing Flight Hub. And I think, I think you'll all agree that the M300 benefits here are clear in this application, where a persistent eye in the sky is strategically critical uh, for central command and the teams on the ground. So really benefiting from the rapid deployment of the M300 um, and, and not to, I mean, let's just skim over a few. I mean, we've got IP45 rated, we've got longer flight times, we've got battery stations for continuous flight with a hot solvable TB60s. We've got eight kilometer range um, in Europe, even further in uh, the United States with the ability to relay control from one controller to the next. And that's super exciting. And I, I'm really looking forward to testing that. We've also got dual com uh, controllers uh, in the enterprise setup. And not forgetting we've got higher wind speed tolerance. And the list really does go on. And I'd just like to say, I think our heli guy friends in the fire and rescue services in Europe and the US will undoubtedly benefit from this rapid deploy deployment features the resilience and the capable machine that it is. And, uh, you know, I think for nighttime ops as well, you know, instant response, search of missing persons, you're talking about aviation, gray situational awareness, the enhanced human machine interface and the ability to fly persistently with spotlight, thermal, high res zoom, wide angle and rangefinder at the same time. That's totally extraordinary. And I thought I'd just chuck this one in. It's actually a case study that's not available yet. It's um, imminent, um, but it's a nice picture from our friends at PLM Police uh, Department in Texas. Um, so they're adopting the M300 into their drone program as the go-to drone for crime and action, instant response, uh, whether that be armed response, security, intelligence gathering, surveillance and reconnaissance. And I think, you know, remember, we've got, we've got an IP45 drone here. So we do have a drone that's ready to serve in all conditions, not to mention the multitude of configurations that we can achieve with it. So I think it's big steps forward. So let's go on to energy. I'll whistle through this one. Energy, uh, so we've got a Valmont here, US company, um, <clears throat> registered in New York on the stock exchange. They're actually a leading producer and distributor of products and services for the global infrastructure and agricultural markets, operating on six continents with, I think they've got 10,000 plus employees, but they've been using drones for years and years. All right, so they use these drones, this drone program for inspecting um, their assets within the energy, telecoms, transport, mining, and ag sectors. So I think, um, I think initial findings for those guys is that the M300 RTK and, and the H20T, it's just helped them gather more efficiently and in a short amount of time, improved quality of, uh, of data. So it's increased productivity. 
And I think it's just a couple of points here, specifically what, what they have highlighted as the biggest benefits for them. They take advantage of the high res grid photo function. Obviously the 20 megapixel sensor with 23 times hybrid optical zoom. It's just, you know, it enables them to capture high res data quickly and efficiently. And not to mention safer. Uh, in, in addition of hot solar batteries, you know, it's increased their mission times and they don't wait to reacquire RTK signal anymore um, when they do that, that battery swap. And of course, the AI spot check. So we're talking about capturing data over time. We talk about time series. They're able to do that now um, with spot check. So I think also you can't imagine in the past, you know, the operations such as Valmont, they potentially were using workflows that include sort of flying up close to their assets, possibly in manual mode, perhaps, to capture high res imagery. Um, for example, with an X7 X or X5 even. Um, or opt for a safer option with a Z30 zoom camera, which was inherently low resolution video, um, which, which in effect a still image sort of extraction um, amounted to a, about a two megapixel image. So they really do now have the best of both worlds. So they can use that H20 from a safe distance without loss of resolution, thanks to the 20 megapixel, 23 times zoom. So, and we look forward to testing that further. A couple of things that just might pique your interest as well. Um, remember the Open Architecture SDK. This year, we will see a new radar payload coming to you guys. So perhaps Q4 this year, for added safety measure, a circular scanning millimeter wave radar with a detection range between one and 30 meters can be mounted on top of the aircraft. This will be of particular interest, I think, to our industrial operations who often are conducting these ops in GPS denied environments, such as bridges, viaducts, or indeed internal inspections. And I think the other thing to note is that it's fully compatible with the DRTK2 mobile station. So those who are familiar with the Phantom 4 RTK, Tutan RTK, all compatible with that DRTK2 mobile station. It's also compatible with the M300. And lastly here, I thought again, another case study that's imminent and I think I'll just show you this nice picture from Shell. You know, using the M300, um, I think it's just great to see the M300 in its habitat, adopted by the oil and gas industry. And we look forward to releasing more, more information on this as well. So guys, that concludes the application section. Uh, I, hope, I hope it's been a, been a real benefit to you. Um, to be honest, we can't wait to get the M300 and the H20s into your hands, um, those that are listening, because ultimately it's you folk that will be defining the new application and specific workflows uh, incorporating this new tool. So yeah, we can't wait to collaborate on future case studies with you. And, and I think I've, we just sort of settled on this slide. And I think sort of setting the sands over the years with Heli Guy, I just want to say that, remember, we are with you all the way. So we understand that, that any drone program consists of many system systems. You know, it's, it's not just the hardware solution, such as an M300. And that's why, you know, we understand we've got to work together efficiently to ultimately achieve success. And I think it's, it's here where Heli Guy has really set the standards and it's a trusted um, a fully service drone supply for all industry and public safety. So that, that service is there. So get in touch to see how the M300 supplied by Heliguy will provide you with, with better results. So in that vein, just to, to point out for you resources, because that's what it's about. You know, the drone technology is rapidly evolving 
and we're always seeking for ways that can help educate about the many benefits that this technology provides and to support everyone that's using it. So the heliguy.com website, this is not a plug, this is just letting you know what resources are there. So yeah, of course it is a plug. It says, get the latest product information. Of course, absolutely. That's what it's there for. But the blog and the use case stories, there's so much in there. The Heliguy Black Box, premium online training resource and delivery. Use it, it's there for you. Um, our team are there, again, give us a call, free, infinite advice. And it really is infinite, you know, from day one onwards, we're here. And of course, the doors always will open, kettles on, schedule a visit to meet us, meet the M300 and the Heliguy team. So, do you know what? I'm super excited. This is clearly a revolutionary drone that's been unleashed from DJI. That has definitively set new standards. And, and on that point, we're sure that you're going to have many, many questions. So thank you. Thanks, Rory, for, uh, for just finalising the application side of, um, of what we're demonstrating there. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, what, like Rory said there, we'd like to open the floor up to, uh, to sort of any questions and, and hopefully provide you with, with uh, a lot of answers here. Um, primarily, I see the, the main point of uh, a question was uh, a price point of view. As it stands, we don't have the current RRP, but we do feel it is going to be very competitive and, uh, and within a lot of people's grasps um, to, to kind of adopt into your current drone program and take you to the next level there. Um, I've noticed another one in terms of the H20 series payloads, uh, whether they are compatible with um, previous models, the, the M200 being uh, one in specific. Um, not clarified as of yet. I don't believe they will be. Um, but as soon as we get them in our possession, we'll do some thorough testing on both platforms, and I'm sure we'll have the information in front of us when we uh, when we get the user manuals and, and the documentation to say that it's either yes or it's no um, on that point there. In regards to the IP rating um, being degraded over time, um, I'm not entirely sure, Ben, is that a possibility or...? Tested in a laboratory environment, so okay. it's certified in that type of environment. That's something we can certainly raise with DJI to get a firm answer on that. Yeah, I'd imagine the probably data will be available over a prolonged period of time to see um, from our service centre whether or not we are noticing any uh, any adoption for that. Also, well, just got another question about the sendance uh, compatibility with the Matrice 300. Unfortunately, it is not compatible. The only remote pilot station is the uh, smart controller enterprise. Yeah, I'd just like to add a bit on the, the, the previous question um, I just overheard about the IP rating. Um, great question. Um, and this is really, um, through last year, we had to approach this um, in a very pragmatic way and we learned a lot. There's a great blog on the Heliguy website that gives you the full uh, breakdown on, on, on the IP ratings, but also that specific question about it wearing down. It's a great question because essentially it's about you guys looking after your aircraft. There are lots of ways of breaching uh, IP and degrading it. So I'm not going to go through them now, but go onto the Heliguy blog um, and, and look up the IP rating article. Uh, there should, should be a search bar there for you, but by all means get in touch if you want me to send you a link. But yes, the, the, you know, in terms of the aircraft, maintaining the integrity of the aircraft, how you treat it, how you package it, how you store it. There's a plethora of very, very important things to know uh, for you guys to maintain your IP status, okay? I hope that helps. We did notice a question in regards to the XT1 with the gimbal adapter. Um, that won't be compatible with the, with the new platform there, unfortunately. So it would only be the XT2 or the H20 series. In regards to release dates, um, so these, this should be available on our site as of next week. Um, we've been assured that stock levels are high within DJI, so the availability should be within the next couple of weeks, if not the next uh, four weeks at the most, uh, if all things go well, uh, corona-related there. Uh, we've got a question to do with uh, mapping. I do, I do apologize, it's just gone yeah. on my screen. That's fine. Inspection only, not a mapping option. 
Yeah, I'll take that one. Um, another good question, yeah, um, mapping. So mapping, uh, generically what we look for for mapping is, uh, you know, your high resolution stills camera and primarily a, a, well, a prime lens um, to give us uh, suitable data for author mosaics, et cetera. So unfortunately at the moment, there is, there is no um, backward com compatibility with the X5S or the X7. And on the roadmap at the moment from DJI, there is not an RGB camera of, of, of a similar elk, if not high resolution for the M300. So therefore, if you have you know, a high demand for mapping um, um, uh, sort of jobs, whatever emissions, whatever it might be, the Phantom 4 RTK and the M210 RTK is still the um, for, forerunner in that respect. Um, Again, it, 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 the, the M300 is open to SDK. We do expect SDK developers, etc., cetera, um, to develop uh, an RGB sensor in due course, but as and when, we don't know. So mapping, if you wanted to, you could still map with an M300 with the 12 megapixel wide angle camera embedded in a H20. That's still possible, but you just have to wonder whether the, that 12 megapixel is suitable. For some sort of preset out jobs, yes, maybe, but obviously for mapping most of it, we, will, we want to get more accurate data. So, so no, not, not currently. I, I would recommend the M210. Okay, we have a couple of questions from YouTube. Uh, one, any specific info about fast charging, radar, RTK2 and CMS radar? And the same individual asked a question, is the smart controller included in the box? Yes, uh, so definitely the smart controller is included within the package there, so that comes as standard. And then there's just the question on uh, any specific info about fast charging, radar, RTK2, uh, CMS radar. So at the moment, information, as uh, Rory and Michael have said, uh, the information we're still waiting for further details on these and we'll release lots of content coming up in the not too distant future uh, another question can different payload feeds be viewed by the pilot and the observer a simple answer is yes that is uh, that is capable of doing it for the m300 there Another question, how are the smart remote controller batteries charged? The WB37s? The WB37s, so they use the, the standard chargers that you've probably more than likely already got. Uh, alternatively, they will be chargeable within the new battery station designed for the uh, TB60 batteries and the WB37s there. So you can charge up to four at once, I believe, on the WB37s, along with two TB60 batteries simultaneously there. It's also worth mentioning the smart controller comes with two batteries. So it takes the WB37, but there's also an internal battery as well, which gives you a much longer time with the controller before needing to change that battery. It means it can also stay powered on during an external battery change when you do change the WB37s. Just seeing if there's any more questions coming in. There seems to be quite a few. <laughs> Uh, so another one from YouTube, is it possible to click in the map in DJI Pilot and then have the H20 pan and zoom to that point? So until we get our hands on the H20 and H20T, I think that's a question I'm going to have to stick a pin in for the time being. Um, we'd like to, we're going to produce lots more content on the, the H20 series um, as soon as we get our hands on them imminently. And so we'll be able to answer that question again very soon. We'll just give it a, another minute or so, see if there's any more questions that come through via the, uh, this feed there or, or via YouTube there. Right then, um, so in conclusion, I think we will, uh, we will call an end to the, the product launch. Uh, all this material will be available um, after uh, we, we've kind of digressed it all and put it onto all channels. So any further information that you do need uh, will be readily available. 
Likewise, feel free to get in touch with ourselves at info at heliguy.com for any more specific questions. Uh, if we haven't got the answer right now, we will certainly have it within the next week or two, especially when we do get our hands on the full system and see it in all its glory. Um, there'll be some nice little teaser videos coming to follow this, uh, a demonstration on setting up in 90 seconds and uh, a more in-depth look into to the payloads there. So keep your eyes posted and peeled for that. And I think for myself here, I'd just like to say thank you all for joining us. Uh, I hope you found it informative, uh, exciting, and, uh, and we hope to hear from you in the very near future. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much and take care.